Hey guys, welcome back. First of all, thanks so much for watching the videos. It's great to know that they've been helping some people. I've received some great comments and I'm really happy for that. So if you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one. And leave the like, leave a like already. Uh, that really helps. Um, second of all, it's that I just launched the website for my test-driven development course. It's not finished yet, but it's just a place for you guys to subscribe and receive updates. Uh, we don't have an early access yet, but I plan to do so in the beginning of the next month. So if you want to receive preview content and get a discount code and all of that, please subscribe there. The link's in the description. It's going to be a really good course and I think you guys will enjoy it. Um, so today we are going to talk about custom exceptions. When do we use it, how it can make our code look better and be easier to read. So it's just way clearer to use custom exceptions and to use a bunch of if blocks and weird return statements. And you're going to see this on the video. I recorded the video yesterday, so I'm recording this video today. So it might be a little bit, um, I might say hello to you guys twice. So that's it, just going back to the TDD course, um, the link's in the description. You can subscribe even if you don't plan on buying it, it's not going to be expensive. And I plan to have an early access version to get feedback from the community and all of that at a much cheaper pricing. If you're from a country with, some, with a, a lower purchasing power, I'm also going to be offering discounts so you all can uh, afford it. And that's it guys, um, let's go to the video, see you later. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to one more video. Today we are going to talk about custom exceptions and writing readable, better readable code using them. So for an example, I have a ticketing platform. I've worked with this in the past, so I think it's a good example. We have some really simple code. We check for a ticket. We see if the user has credits. I'm using credits here because I do not want to implement a gateway, a payment provider. If, he, if they do not have enough credits, we award and say not enough credits. If the ticket is not available and this method is really simple, it just checks if the quantity of the tickets is higher or equal to the quantity that the user wants. And by the way, the ticket model is really simple. It just has those, those three columns, uh, name, price and quantity. And then we just call this checkout service and call the purchase ticket method to create a purchase. And it does not really do anything, it just decreases the credits of the user and returns the purchase. For the user, I'm not actually creating a user, I'm, I'm tricking Laravel into thinking that we have a user authenticated. And the reason is I want to play with this credits here. So we are simulating an API as well, I have Postman here. So we have the ticket, we have the amount. If we try to purchase it, it works. And this particular ticket ID one only has two of quantity. So if we try to, I don't know, purchase three, it's going to throw an error. And we are seeing the exception trace because we have debug on. But if I go here and turn this to false, as you would in production, and I'm not, oh, I have to restart the server, sorry. So if I go here and run this, we only get the message. Let's turn it on because we are indeed developing. So um, when you have lots of if blocks, it tends to get messy. You probably have more complex logic than the one I have here. And if you need to do another check, you're adding another if block and it just gets really confusing sometimes. I don't know, let's say the ticket's not available. You just don't, you don't just say the ticket's not available. You probably readjust uh, the amount the user has. Let's say you went to buy five tickets, only four are available. You are probably going to change it for automatically and alert the user that not enough tickets are available and that the card quantity was changed automatically to the maximum amount um, that there is available at the moment. Um, so the easiest way to kind of get rid of this is to just move this into this method. So we, are, we already passed the user, the ticket, let's pass the amount as well. And let's go into this class and just paste it here. So we can change off user to the user object that we already expect. 
change request amount for the amount and let's just add it here by the way abort is a method uh, provided by Laravel it just throws a an exception to a um, an abort page a 404 401 whatever you want you, you select the status code so let's run it so we still get it not enough tickets let's try one it works let's try decreasing the credits to 40 the ticket currently costs 50 not enough credits okay cool let's get back to 70 okay so we've kind of refactored this but it's still a little bit messy so um, if I were to I don't know do some actions like what I said changing the card or something it's just going to be a little bit dirty what I see a lot of people doing is they do something like this if there are not enough credits they return an array saying something like that so success false error not enough credits I say this a lot and then they make the purchase and they do something like purchase success if it didn't succeed then they throw an error something like that let's try this let's see if it works properly we are doing on credit so let's decrease this to 40 on the finite index um, oh, okay typo okay not enough credits so I see a lot of people doing this and on a success case they would return something like an array saying success true and then I don't know purchase something like that I really see this a lot I'm not kidding um, I've done this in the past it's quite common I mean it's a way to, to deal with the situation right so we could do something like if the error is um, not enough tickets then you want to reset the card something like that and you just get a lot of F blocks and it starts to get really messy you don't really know what's going on and the easiest way to deal with this is to use exceptions for instance instead of doing all of this you can add this into a try catch block actually let's go to the checkout service before so right here we have this check and let's say the user does not have enough credits before we were using the abort method but now let's just throw an exception we can just say throw exception not enough credits get rid of this let's add this and here as well so not enough tickets okay cool so we still have one line here uh, we just we didn't really change much but if we go here we can do something like this try let's try to make a purchase so it already becomes much more readable and if we face an issue if it does not work we want to abort and show the exception method if you don't know what a try catch block is uh, read the documentation this is very um, it's a beginner thing um, it's useful to, to know this let's try this so not enough credits uh, let's put enough credits but get a different amount let's try buying five tickets not enough tickets okay it works properly but the issue here is that we are catching all exceptions so if another exception is thrown we are still doing the same thing and for instance if the user does not have if the ticket does not have enough um, units does not, does not, does not have um, the quantity we desire we can't really do much with it unless we add another check saying hey if the message is not enough tickets the same thing we were doing before we do we do like reset card something like that so it's still messy we still have an if block here and the solution is custom exceptions so instead of catching this global exception we are going to create our own exceptions and throw them so for this instance where we don't have enough credits we can go and create an exceptions folder inside our app directory and we can say not enough credits exception 
and we don't even really need to implement anything we can just add a namespace not enough credits exception and we just need to extend the exception class that's it we don't need to have anything inside this class anything so let me show you guys what I mean instead of throwing this regular exception we are going to throw a not enough credits exception okay cool and then we're going to throw a general exception take a look at this so we are already catching this one so we are going to say regular exception which means it is a not available error so not enough tickets but we are also going to catch the one that we just created so we'll go here catch not enough credits exception import it and we're going to say not enough tickets let's try this so yeah not enough tickets uh, I'm sorry not enough credits let's try this uh, <laughs> let's change this to 40 let's ask for one yeah not enough credits so we are catching this exception if I go and type one two three so we can already differentiate between this exception and the rest but this one whenever the tickets not available is it still falling with the general exception so we can really differentiate between um, another kind of exception and that a ticket's not available so what we do is we create another custom exception so not enough tickets exception let's just paste that tickets and we can throw it not enough tickets exception and then we don't really need to we don't even need to, to pass this because we already know what we are talking about so we can catch it enough tickets exception by the way using the verbal call e is a, a bad habit that i have uh, i would always suggest calling this exception um so when we need when we have a not enough credits we just want to abort say not enough credits and when we have not enough tickets, we want to abort with the 404 and say not enough tickets. Let's try this. So not enough credits, 401. Let's add enough credits. So let's try 70 and try 5. Not enough tickets, 404. So we've already cleaned up a lot here. We, we can see how we are handling each situation. And we can even clear this a little bit more. Laravel has a method called abort if or throw if. Both are really useful. And if you see the signature, we have a condition and then we have the exception. So what we can do is, if the user credits are lower than the ticket price, we throw a not enough credits exception. And we have the throw unless, which just is a negative if so unless the ticket is available for the amount we desire throw a not enough tickets exception i particularly don't really like to use the throw unless i would rather use throw f and add an exclamation here so let's try this um class 50 what what oh here sorry if the user credits is less than the ticket price, not enough tickets. So we just cleaned up a lot of this. We can even do this like this. But yeah, we still we are still aborting it. What can we do to make this better? Well, we already have an instance of not enough credits exception and not enough tickets exception. So if you want to automatically throw a validation error you can do something like let's see what we have not enough tickets so let's play with this one 
you can do something like exception validation exception you are calling a method so let's try running this okay we get an error because we do not have this method but if we go to this exception and yes we can implement methods here and say validation exception we can automatically return a validation exception and this exception will be automatically managed by Laravel and we can say there are not enough tickets let's try this so yeah um, the given data was invalid there are not enough tickets so take a look at how it looks right now we know clearly which error we are dealing with we can automatically throw a validation exception it's really clean uh, you can look at this and know what's going on and as you know that we are dealing with not enough tickets exception here before you throw the validation error you can do something like clean card or reset card or whatever you want to do for instance in this case I would automatically reduce the number of tickets selected by the user to the amount that we have available and let them know so I would do both this and show an alert with sweet alert or something and then I would throw the validation exception but take a look at this this is much cleaner so we are trying to perform a purchase if there are not enough credits we want to abort and say this if there are not enough tickets we want to throw a validation exception ideally you would do the same here but this is it's, it talks to you you know um, you can take a look at this and know exactly what's going on and I use custom exceptions a lot a lot Laravel uses a lot as well and they are really really helpful uh, for instance if you were dealing if you were dealing with payments you could do something like the try to perform a payment and then um, you could catch the exception like payment failed and then you could do something with this and you are not handling other kind of uh, other kinds of exceptions so if your application fails for another reason you are not handling this if you have something like sentry or bugs and egg running you will know what happened but for the errors that you were throwing you are handling it and you can make your code so much more readable and easier to maintain um, so yeah guys uh, this is the lesson that I want to pass on today um, take a look at how simple this is this all happens inside the checkout service so this is all part of the purchase ticket lifecycle um, and you can just catch the errors and do whatever you want with them um, so guys if this video helped you I will like you to leave a like and hit the subscribe button um, if you could share the video as well that would be very helpful um, if we can reach more people that's really nice that would be really really nice and if this video helped you um, you can leave a comment if you don't like this approach I will ask you to leave a comment as well let's discuss a little bit I know that this is not everyone's favorite cup of tea but I particularly really like this approach uh, thanks for watching guys and see you in the next video